Often when I speak to coaches, consultants, and small to medium business owners who are tackling their digital and content marketing, they're getting caught up in the content creation or just the design piece of the puzzle. Now, they might start maybe creating a blog or a podcast and maybe writing a few posts about topics that have a high ranking uh, search result or they want to incorporate their local SEO and they think they're winning. And then maybe they start distributing this content through a newsletter or social media. And then they realize that they want maybe a bigger audience. And then they start launching lead magnets and maybe creating nature funnels in order for them to actually start growing their email marketing list. Now, unfortunately, as business owners go through this whole content creation process from blogging, social media, and all of those things, it's easy to get burned out and really fast. And they don't have, um, and if they don't have a strategy to fuel this creation, this now becomes spraying and praying with their marketing. They may also get what's called writer's block or actually run out of content ideas or just get bored with the content grind of just content creation for creation's sake. And the good news is there's an easy fix to this problem. You need to create what's called a client avatar. Now, typically I re recommend that people tackle this initial step before they even start looking at all the should do's floating out there. Because once you have a client avatar, it positively impacts your marketing motivation and it actually keeps you serving um, you know, your clients to the best of your ability, to the best of your provision. And the sales are easier. You know why? Because you're creating for and relating to the clients that you actually want to work with. So you might be asking, what is this client avatar? Your client avatar is a representation of your ideal client and your target audience for the marketing that you're going to be putting out there. And creating this client avatar actually helps you to understand and connect with your ideal client on a deeper level. It clearly defines you know, your niche and it helps you to hone in on your messaging, on your sales pitch, on the content, and pretty much any other element that you might be putting out there for your coaching or your consulting practice. Now, you might also be asking, how do I create this um, client avatar? Or how do I create my own client avatar? A lot of people approach the client avatar creation process in a few different ways, but I like to really keep it simple because once you do simple things, it, made it makes it easy for you to be consistent with them. Start with a list of demographic and psychographic traits, then you want to expand this list into long form uh, client case study or a short story that actually captures the client's attention and um, problems they might be facing. Now, if you're feeling extra creative, you can actually create a handy little PowerPoint uh, slide or PDF that actually includes your client avatar description and a few images to put face to the personality that you have built. This helps you connect with um, the client avatar that you're creating. So how do you do this? You start by asking questions, okay? So when you get started in creating your own client avatar, it actually helps you to start thinking about the niche which you have chosen um, that you want to serve, okay? This might maybe be technology professionals in Melbourne, or it can be mothers in Sydney. Depending on who you like working best, this will make it easy for you to create your client avatar. Even if your niche feels a little bit broad, it's a good, you know, kickoff point for you to actually start asking some of the more specific questions that entail you to be specific with the content that you're going to be putting out there. So some of the questions might be, how old is this ideal client that you want to 
reach out for because their age means what sort of social media platforms you can reach out to them on. Or you might ask questions like, what is their household income or what is the income from their business? Because this then means, are they able to pay for the services that you're putting out there? What is the career path that they have pursued? Or maybe what responsibilities do they have? Because some of the content needs to relate to who they are and how they actually are going to engage with the stuff that you're putting out there. Are they married? Are they single? Are they in a relationship? All of this matters because how are you going to be, um, you know, what time are you reaching out to them? Because if they have kids, um, you need to know how old these kids are because if you're going to be speaking to new parents, then talking about bicycles is not going to help them. All right. So what are they passionate about and what are their actual life goals? Because these are the things that keeps them up at night. And this is what they will be searching for on the Internet in order for them not to make a mistake. And then you want to know as well, what are their biggest fears and what does your solution do in order for them to um, alleviate these concerns that they might have? Now, here is where it sometimes um, you know, I sometimes get a pushback from coaches and consultants who I speak to about their client avatars because they say, I don't have a true niche, you know, or they might think that they speak to a broad range of people. How can I create just one client avatar? I mean, it's okay that you feel this way, but I'm going to maybe burst your bubble a little bit and guarantee that having a niche of some sort will probably help you frame your message, okay? You probably just haven't framed what it is that you actually do and how you can help these people because that's what your client after the process can actually help you do for you to actually clarify your message because your niche might actually be the solution that you're providing. How do you make other people's lives better? That's your niche. That's how you are showing up in these people's lives. And that's why they would miss you when you're gone. So when you uncover the deeper fears, their goals, and the values for your ideal client, you're actually creating that psychographic niche which other people cannot actually reach out to. And your clients may actually spawn from a different range of ages, professions, locations, and a whole lot more. But more likely, they may have a consistent thread that actually ties them together and makes them your ideal client. What do they want after all is said and done? More often than not, the consistency that comes across you know, your ideal customers can be something intangible. Well, how do they want to feel after they've worked with you? Because when you follow this exercise and asking yourself all of these questions, it will actually force you to dig deeper and have an innate understanding of your ideal clients, who they are, what they want, and what actually motivates them. And this will ultimately help you to hone in on your messaging and you can serve them at an even more elevated way, more than what other people are willing to do, um, you know, in your competitive, in your competition there. So your client avatar sort of summary should look like this. Okay. Let's say you've given this a name um, or you've actually pinpointed who these people are. It might be Sally and Mike have been married for several years and they have two kids, both in primary school. Okay. This might be your actual ideal audiences. All right. So they are a busy family with family activities and both kids are enrolled um, you know, in after sports activity, music lessons, and they feel like they get, barely get enough time to check all the must-dos of the list at the end of the week. This is why your content should align with who they are and exactly what they're going through, um, you know, in their day-to-day -day life. So if Mike is a business analyst in the technological sector and Sally might be a secondary school teacher, they're both busy parents. And you might also know that together they make a combined $250,000 a year 
then you know they might have disposable income in order to be able to afford the services that you're offering to them, okay? And they know that they make enough money, but they're still struggling to maybe cover their monthly expenses. This will inform how you market to them and how you actually reach out to them. They probably have a dream of maybe traveling and maybe taking their kids on a year long sabbatical where they want to explore the world together and have no idea on how to make this happen. If your work involves, you know, having people, you know, manage their money or budgets, this could be an opportunity time for you to actually help them. Maybe their mortgage is a burden and they're worried that they don't even have, um, you know, money to leave or be able to afford the lifestyle, which they've always dreamed about or to give their kids in order for them to feel satisfied and fulfilled that the work that they're doing is actually resulting um, you know, in the results that they want. So when you use your client avatar that you created, you can actually plug in that client avatar into several parts of Sally and Mike's story, both internally and maybe in a client facing way. Because personally, now you know what is keeping them up at night. So you can use this on your website. Um, you can use all this information for client case studies and, you know, uh, whatever information that you're giving to other clients out there. Because some people can start relating to the stories that you write about their client avatar. And when you create a client avatar to be a story, people are more likely to connect with you and they can actually view your services to be tailor fit to their actual needs. Okay. So how can your client avatar help your business or your practice? You know, now that you've got a newly created client avatar, you're now ready to actually put it into practice. Now, of course, I like to start using, um, you know, using this client avatar to actually hone in on your marketing message. So here's a few steps that you can actually take in order to make your marketing easier and especially more effective because now you've got an innate understanding of who your audience is and what they're going through and how your solutions and your services can be of utmost use to them, okay? So you want to comb through your website copy, all right? You want to look at it and, and, and ask yourself, does your messaging sound like it's actually geared towards your avatar's goals and fears, all right? Because when people are afraid of something, it keeps them up at night. And if your solution can help them, then it actually makes it easy for them to engage with you. And then create a content calendar, all right? What sort of questions does your client avatar have, all right? What concerns are they facing? And then you start, um, you know, leveraging all of these questions into your client, um, you know, calendar and create these topics. Um, write about these topics, create videos around them. And remember, the more specific you can be, the better it is for your clients to relate to, um, you know, the content that you're putting out there, okay? So think about your social media as well. Where is your client um, avatar hanging out online? Lean into those social media efforts on, on those specific social media channels. And if you know where exactly they are and at what time you can reach out to them, it makes it easy for you to communicate with them. And also you start knowing how do they actually want to be connected, um, you know, communicated with. Do they want an email newsletter, um, you know, monthly, or do they want a weekly newsletter that shows them, you know, how to make sense of the world around them? Or would they prefer maybe a quarterly printed newsletter via snail mail? Whichever way, what touch points will be meaningful for them? Remember, these people are busy. Remember, they've got kids to look after. Remember, they've got all these activities. This can actually impact even the smallest aspects of your marketing. So you no longer spray and pray with your marketing. It actually makes it... Um, you know, connect with the audience that you're reaching out with. Okay. So for example, if your client avatar value, um, values making an impact, if you send them a card each year announcing that you've made a charity in their, in their name in lieu of a client gift, this may actually make them resonate with what it is that you're doing. So beyond marketing, your client avatar can actually help you focus on your sales funnel, update your client onboarding process, and it also helps you adjust the approach where you actually, um, you know, connect with new clients and figure out ways that you can help them generate referrals 
for for you okay so when you connect everything in your business it actually helps you um connect with and relate to your ideal client avatar and you're actually setting yourself up for success as you have noticed i help coaches and consultants and small to medium businesses with their content with their digital and social media marketing i want them to create for and relate to their audiences i don't want people to just be spraying and praying with their marketing out there so here at live long digital you'll find resources that you need to um tell your story communicate your value and put together marketing strategies that actually convert clients who pay stay and refer i viscerally want you to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable so click the link below so that you too can actually start to create um for and relate to the client avatars that you have out there bye for now